Okay, in this series of videos, I'm going to talk about deploying a virtual pod or VPod on ACI. So let's get to it. The first is just a really quick high level overview of the topology in my particular lab. Uh, I've got two pods here in a multi pod setup, and I've got IPN devices connecting them. This is a standard multi pod setup, nothing exotic. We're not going to show that configuration, it already is running. What we're going to add here is we're going to add vpod number 10 here, uh, as you can see, and it's going to be connected uh, over a layer 3 network. I'm sort of borrowing my IPN devices, but uh, normally this is just a generic layer 3 WAN between the vpod uh, and your physical ACI pod or multipod. So let's quickly go over the setup flow, and I'll show all of these steps in my lab in the future video. So we'll go over some prerequisites, some design considerations, things like that. Uh, then we'll talk about what you need to do to prep the VPod location. Uh, you're going to need uh, some subnets, uh, have some OVAs ready to go in vCenter, and create a VMM domain in ACI ahead of time. Uh, phase two is uh, preparing the physical pod to participate in a vpod environment. And then phase three, go ahead and finalize the configuration of the vpod uh, in APIC itself. And then we will finish off by testing. Really quickly, just to kind of set the stage for, for what virtual pod is trying to solve here, um, you have a physical ACI data center somewhere in your main site, wh wherever, but you have a need to extend the power policy and capability of ACI to remote locations, but maybe those locations, all you care about is the virtual environment, and you already have your virtual machine, uh, ESX host or whatever, uh, in place, and you don't want to buy any additional networking hardware. Like You don't want to buy more ACI just to support some VM. In a, in a remote location. Uh, these remote locations could be bare metal cloud providers, uh, smaller data centers, colo facilities, uh, branch offices, things like that. Uh, and this is a, a prime uh, candidate for deploying virtual pod because the idea here is you're extending ACI, but you're doing it in a purely virtual sense, not buying more ACI hardware for those, uh, those faraway sites. Really quickly, let's kind of break down what are the components that comprise a virtual pod in ACI. And we've got two of them. The first is uh, this notion of a virtual spine and virtual leaf. So we're going to deploy these V spines, V leaves on this ESX host. They're just simply virtual machines, uh, pretty standard uh, basic deployment. These provide your control plane functions so we can connect this back over the WAN and uh, and talk to our physical ACI fabric. Uh, the second uh, component here is ACI Virtual Edge or AVE running in what we call VPOD, VPOD or cloud mode. AVE handles all of the data plane functions. So this is where you're gonna build your port groups and connect your virtual machines so that they can actually send traffic. There are some prerequisites for VPOD. Uh, you need to be running uh, ACI 4.02C or later. And as of this video, that is the current version. Uh, you're going to need to have already downloaded uh, some OVAs from Cisco. So there's there's uh, the management OVA, uh, which represents the V spines, V leaves, and then there's the different OVA for the AVE. You're going to take those and upload them into your vCenter content library. You're going to want to have your vCenter plugin uh, uh, installed already, uh, version 4.0. Uh, the reason for that is uh, in order to simplify the installation and take care of all the stuff in the background, the vCenter plugin helps automate all of that for you. If you're not a fan of the plugin, we also have a way to do it via Python. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you using the plugin. Uh, of course, you need to have ESX host or host located already running in the vPod location because that's where we're, we're going to deploy our vLeaves and vSpines and AVE and, and all of your VMs. Um, so finally, uh, in order to connect that vPod site back to, let's say, your central data center where ACI is running, you need some kind of layer 3, generic layer 3 router that allows us to connect across the WAN. Uh, that router uh, can be from any vendor you like. Um, it needs to support a couple of basic things, DHCP relay, so we can discover the vPod devices and register them to the fabric. Uh, a, a slightly higher MTU, I say a minimum of 1550, and that's because VXLAN is 50 extra bytes end cap. Uh, I would probably even go so far as to say 1600 is a better minimum, but if you can go full jumbo frame 9000 plus, that go for that if you can. Uh, and then maximum latency between the vPod and the main site is uh, 150 milliseconds, which works out to uh, quite a far distance. Okay, uh, what about working with other architectures that you may have already deployed, like multi-site, multi multi-pod, etc.? So in, in the current uh, version, 402C, the only supported technology that works with vPod is multi-pod. We don't yet support multi-site 
or Remote Leaf with VPod, but that is coming very soon. ACI 4.1, 4.2 should uh, kind of complete that picture, but as of right now, 4.0, it is not uh, supported. Okay, uh, I want to show you two pictures. The first is what your architecture should look like in the VPod site the proper way, you know, the supported way. And then I'm going to show you how I have it set up in my lab. And I'll go very quickly here. If you read the configuration guide for VPod, we tell you you want to have two different ESX clusters, one of them for management. And this is where we will deploy the VLeaf, VSpine uh, items in its own cluster of ESX hosts. And you probably want at least two for redundancy. And then the other cluster, what we call the workload cluster, that's where you're going to in, uh, install AVE and attach your end user VMs uh, for normal traffic. Uh, so that's that's the uh, recommended deployment. In my particular lab, I don't have the luxury of that much hardware, so I have put everything on a single ESX host. So clearly this is not production grade, this is not redundant, uh, but there's nothing technically stopping me from doing this for lab testing purposes. So in this case, I have a single ESX host. I'm going to deploy one VLeaf and one VSpine, uh, and then I'm going to also put AVE on the very same host. Uh, notice the VLeaf and VSpine are connected through a vSwitch, separate from the AVE where I connect my VMs. Now, we're going to need a bunch of TEP addresses for all of these things to work. This is normal in an ACI fabric, so all of these red arrows are where we're going to need addresses. But don't worry. I show this picture on purpose because it's really a lot simpler than it looks. So it's really easy. So we're going to need a couple of things uh, uh, for each of this. So each existing physical pod needs an additional TEP pool that we call the external TEP pool. This is uh, beyond and in addition to any internal TEP pool that you may have running when you first set up your fabric. So this is really easy. In my case, we have Multipod already in place. Uh, so we're going to borrow um, uh, some things from Multipod. What will also happen here is ACI will handle a lot of stuff automatically. So there is a need to map uh, external TEP pool addresses to internal addresses. And this will become clear when I actually show it. And so uh, the spines will automatically handle that for you. There's nothing for you to do. It's already done. And then any other TEPs that need to get handed out uh, from the new external pool for VPod are just going to happen automatically. There's nothing for you to do other than basically say, hey, here's a pool that you can use as the external TEP pool. The second thing you need is each spine in any of the physical pods uh, needs a VPod unicast TEP address, right? So again, really easy. We have multipod in place. We can just borrow the one we're already using for multipod, or if we really want to, we can pick a new one. It doesn't really matter. And then finally, the third thing is each VPod needs its own TEP pool. And that's an obvious thing. I think any pod needs a TEP pool. And so APIC, once you assign that pool, will automatically hand out addresses when they're needed, where they're needed. So it's actually quite easy. Okay, uh, a couple of words about this external TEP pool thing. Uh, why are we doing this? Well, the idea here really is to uh, understand first and foremost that um, these TEP addresses need to be routable across the WAN. And it becomes challenging in some cases to route, you know, a whole slash 16 that you may have chosen for your existing internal TEP pool. So we came up with the concept of the external TEP pool. It can be a lot, lot smaller, minimum slash 29 slash 24 recommended. Uh, and we will use this uh, and route this across the, the WAN uh, in order to handle all of the, the, the needs for TEP addresses in the VPod environment for things like APIC, spines, border leaves, and all that kind of stuff. We can also use some of these addresses addresses for our data plane tap, our unicast tap, and, and uh, you know router IDs when we set up uh, peering as well. So just like anything else you see me configure, there's always some decisions you need to make about names, uh, interface, numbers, addresses, all of that stuff. So I've created this cheat sheet. These are This is all the stuff I'm, I want to have ahead of time before I start configuring. Now, because we've got Multipod already in place, we can reuse some of these things, and those are in black. Anything that we need to add new for the purposes of VPod is in red. And so I'm going to refer back to this cheat sheet uh, multiple times as we configure VPod, but you should probably have something uh, very similar before you deploy your own VPod. Finally, um, another example of, of what does this WAN router in the VPod site actually look like? Well, it's generic routing. There's nothing special here at all, uh, but I'll call out a few things. I've uh, allocated a subnet, so 192.168.200 for, for this. Uh, I've set up DHCP relay. I've set up basic OSPF routing so that I can actually route all of this stuff. Uh, and I've allocated VLAN 200. It can be any VLAN you want. I chose 200. And of course, I'm using a, a larger size MTU of 92.16. 
Furthermore, I've also already downloaded the OVAs from Cisco.com and I've put them into a content library in the vCenter where I'm going to be deploying all of this vPod stuff. Note that there are two OVAs. One is the ACI vPod management. That is a single OVA that allows you to deploy either a virtual leaf or a virtual spine. It's the same OVA. Uh, you just, uh, when you deploy it, you make a choice about role. And the second OVA is the AVE uh, for the data plane layer here. And I've up already uploaded those things into my vCenter content library. Something else that I've already done is I've pre-configured a VMM domain for purposes of this vPod AVE. Uh, I'll take you through it in the video when I set it up, but just note that you want to have this set up ahead of time before you get to actually doing the vPod configuration. And then finally, when we actually do the configuration, we're going to be using uh, a wizard in ACI. And the wizard is actually quite well done. It's, it's quite clear, uh, descriptive, and it takes you through all of the steps uh, in a very easy fashion. Okay, and that's it for the setup, uh, and I'll close this video. In the next video, I'll actually go into the steps of configuring vPod in my lab. Thank you.